AMD released their brand new Ryzen 4000 series mobile CPUs last week and the very first laptop that I reviewed with that CPU was MSI's Bravo 17 and I have to say the performance of the CPU was just incredible so I couldn't wait to get started on the second laptop that came in which is this one Asus ROG Zephyrus G15. Now this is a 15 inch brother of the G14 and I'm pretty sure you've seen some of those reviews online already. Unfortunately, I wasn't lucky enough to get an early media sample of the G14, but I managed to get my hands on this one a couple of days later. Also, this one comes from a retail stock, so um, it is the final and definite version, and all the results and things I'm going to be talking about today is what you should expect if you decide to purchase this gaming laptop. Even though this Asus G15 is a bit more upmarket from the MSI Bravo 17, Asus actually positioned it as a more affordable alternative to the G14. So this is the most basic version and it will cost you around 1500 euros or dollars. And for that, you will get a Ryzen 7 4800HS, a 1660Ti Max-Q GPU, 16 gigabytes of memory, one terabyte SSD and 144 Hertz IPS panel. Now, if you have and you're willing to spend a bit more money, you can get a beefier version of the G15 and it goes up to a Ryzen 9 CPU, a RTX 2060 GPU. You can get 32 gigabytes of RAM and a 240 Hertz IPS panel. Now, I've been testing it and playing with it for the last few days and I cannot wait to share it with you guys. So without further ado, let's begin. This video is brought to you by the Elgato Keylight Air. Now you probably think key lights are made to make your streaming setup look more professional, but did you know it's also great for your plants? They just thrive in that soft lighting that can be easily adjusted using your app or your stream deck. Love your plants, by Elgato. When it comes to the design of this laptop, I think Asus really knows how to deliver because this laptop actually looks and feels great. It has a really clean and sleek design, but still manages to feel like an interesting ROG product and not just a simple black box. It reminds me a lot of the ROG SCAR 3 laptop, and that one is actually in a completely different class. It is just shy of two centimeters in height and just over two kilos in weight. So I say for a gaming laptop, it is pretty portable. Build quality is also really good and the finish is great with very nice rounded edges all over. The metal does keep fingerprints, but it's not as bad as some other metal tops I've seen so far. The panel itself is sturdy as well and it's really nice to be able to open it with just one hand, so it just gives a really good overall impression. The inside is plastic, but again, it feels sturdy and I think that the plastic helps it be a bit more fingerprint resistant than the outside of the laptop. So honestly, sturdy plastic would beat super thin metal in my opinion. The bezels on the top and on the side are very nice and thin, but as you can see, there is no webcam present. That might be great for some, but I can imagine that some of you really need to use a webcam every once in a while, so make sure you know this. The keyboard on the G15 is excellent. It has a decent amount of travel, barely any flex in the chassis, and it's just really nice for gaming and for typing. The clear white backlighting under the black keys makes them very easy to read, and uh, it just looks good. I also appreciate the dedicated volume and mute button, as well as the ROG button to open the Armory software, which can be used to swap between different performance profiles, update your drivers or monitor your hardware. Now the precision touchpad is decent enough, but I do think the surface could have been a bit smoother. It just feels like there's a bit more resistance than there should be. Now it's fine really, and the gamers will use a mouse anyway, but it is not the best touchpad on the market. When it comes to the connectivity, there is an ethernet and HDMI on the left, along with a Type-C USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, a USB 3 Type-A port and a combined audio jack. On the right side, there are two more USB 3 Type-A ports. There is no Thunderbolt connection, unfortunately, nor any SD card readers. What is interesting, though, is that while the laptop comes with a pretty compact 180 watt adapter, you can also use a Type-C port to charge the laptop up to 65 watts. So, if you like to take your laptop to school or the office for some light use, you can just grab a super compact Type-C charger and work all day, leaving the regular high power charger at home for when you're gaming. 
Alright, so let's talk about the performance and while um, MSI Bravo 17 actually had a Ryzen 7 4800H, this laptop has a Ryzen 7 4800H S CPU and this is supposed to be an Asus exclusive that is a slightly lower power version. So this one is supposed to be rated at 35 watts while the regular 4800H is supposed to be rated at 45 watts. So as expected, we can see that G15 is slightly behind the Bravo 17 in all pure CPU performance benchmarks. Now it's not really a huge difference and it's worth pointing out that even the 4800HS still eats Intel Core i7 CPUs for breakfast, which you can actually see in the MSI GS66 and the GF65 here in the graph, which has slightly higher single core performance, but it is limited by six cores in multi-threaded applications. Looking at games, we can see the 4800HS really isn't holding the GTX 1660 Ti Max U back, as it comfortably leaves the Bravo 17 with the Radeon RX 5500M behind. Now it actually gets quite close to the more expensive RTX 2060 options. Now the MSI GF65 does have a bit of an edge in game benchmarks since it uses the GTX 1660 Ti non max Q, but still these results are great even for some of the most demanding CPU heavy titles, so whatever games you enjoy, the G15 should handle them comfortably. Now you might ask yourself why would you pay a bit more to get a laptop that performs a tiny bit less, but the flip side of choosing a laptop that has a bit more uh, efficient parts is the battery life, and the battery life of the G15 is much better than most of its competitors. In the reasonably heavy PC Mark 8 loop, it held around four and a half hours, and when watching Netflix with a display set to 180 nits, it actually lasted for seven and a half to eight hours. Now that's not quite ultrabook results, but for a gaming laptop, that is actually really great battery life. Also a quick shout out for the one terabyte SSD, which Asus didn't cheap out on and is actually one of the faster ones we find in laptops. One thing that really stood out while testing this laptop is that both CPU and GPU were getting quite hot while gaming. So when I was playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is a very CPU heavy game, the CPU was standing at 93 degrees Celsius and the GPU at 86 degrees Celsius, which is technically fine, but still a lot hotter than I expected it to be. So let's open it up and see what's going on with the cooling here. The G15 is actually very easy to open thanks to the new pop-up screw in the bottom right corner. Unfortunately, they use different sizes of screws, so you really need to keep track of which one goes where, and I would say if they could really stick to just one size, that would be great. Most of the internals are pretty straightforward here. It is very easy to clean the fans, replace the battery, or add an extra NVMe SSD if you really think that one terabyte is not enough. The Wi-Fi chip can be replaced as well, but since this is a Wi-Fi 6 chip, there is no need to do so. Unfortunately, there is only one memory slot and the other 8GB is soldered on the rear side of the motherboard, so I don't think 16GB will be a limitation for gamers here, but it's good to know if you were planning to expand that, you cannot go to a 32GB of dual channel memory, you should just purchase a 32GB version right away. Now what I find really interesting is that while the bottom cover has vent holes above the CPU and GPU fans, they're actually closed from the inside with a piece of metal and a thin black sheet. So I decided to remove those and retest the laptop and it actually showed some improvements in thermals as well as the performance. It did get a tiny bit louder when I removed them, but the CPU temperatures were down by 5 degrees, the GPU temperature was down by 10 degrees, and both CPU and GPU ran a bit faster. I did ask Asus why they decided to do this, and their response was that it keeps the temperatures of the keyboard and some parts of the motherboard down, but... Um, I don't understand why are there vents there to begin with then, and after taking it off, uh, the keyboard was fine, but the temperatures of the CPU and GPU was much lower, and the performance is better, so for myself, I think I'm going to keep it off, but before you actually go and take off the covers for yourself, make sure you know that this will affect your warranty. One thing that I'm a bit disappointed about is the display of this gaming laptop, but I do have to give credit to Asus for actually listing that in their spec sheet. Now, the sRGB color gamut of this 144Hz display 
is just barely mediocre. They promised 62% sRGB coverage while this laptop was doing 58% and that is close enough to what they promised but still not enough to recommend this laptop to anyone who's going to do any photo or video editing next to gaming. Now I do think that that is a bit of a missed opportunity because this AMD CPU would be great for these tasks. Now, they do say that the 240 Hz IPS panel version should have a full sRGB coverage, so if you're gonna do any photo or video editing, that is the version you should go for. Of course, that doesn't really matter much if most of what you do is game, and it's still really nice and fast. The contrast is very nice as well at 1406 to 1, and I think it gives a very good impression in both fast games and immersion style games. Now the peak brightness could have been a bit higher, but about 300 nits is fine for indoor use. Okay, so that about covers it for the Asus ROG Zephyrus G15 laptop, and uh, even though they did a lot of interesting things with the laptop that I really like, there are also some downsides to consider before buying this laptop. Let's start with the downsides. So the first thing is definitely the display. Now this uh, 144 Hz uh, display is great if all you do is game, but for any serious creative tasks, I would say to go for the 240 Hz version because that one should have full sRGB coverage and it comes calibrated out of the box. Now the uh, stock temperatures as well are okay but not great and uh, I really want to find out more about the internal design of this laptop so when I do I will post a little update down below uh, but as you know in this time of crisis the communication can be a bit slower so it might take a bit before I do that. On a positive side I really love the design of the laptop and I think it's built really well. I mean you do pay a bit of a premium from the MSI Bravo 17 but you actually get a look and a feel of an even more expensive laptop so I definitely have to give it to Asus for that. I mean, the keyboard is just so pleasant to work on and to game on. And the whole specs of this laptop are very well balanced, so you can run any game you want to play, and you can even do some heavy CPU tasks. And I really like the fact that you get a lot of storage and very fast storage as well, so you don't really need to upgrade that either. Now, the fact that you can uh, charge it on USB Type-C when you're out of the house for some very light tasks is also very nice because you can leave your heavy charger at home for when you're gaming, but I don't even know if you need that because the battery life of this laptop is so great that you can be seven to eight hours on the battery while you're doing some light tasks. So that's actually quite exceptional as well. So. Overall, this laptop is definitely something worth looking into if you're looking to buy a gaming laptop for around 1500 euros or dollars. Now that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this laptop and about this review. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and see you in the next one. Bye!